What's up guys, Damien Keyes here. Welcome back to the channel. One thing I find very, very interesting is how the music industry changes. And it's changing faster than ever. In fact, when I started this channel, it was 2017, and already the music industry was in a very different place. And it was changing rapidly. But now, because of the lockdown thing outside that we're not allowed to talk about, but also other things like the constant shifting of social media platforms and technology, the music industry is constantly playing catch up and it's trying to play catch up faster and faster all of the time. Every single time something changes with social media, the music industry is forced to shift because it's not social media, it's human consumption. It's how we consume. So all of the stuff with TikTok or all of the changes that are now happening with with Instagram or if there's a new platform or if there's some weird algorithm shift or if there's something outside in the news that then changes our thought pattern, our consumption patterns, all of these things change and all of a sudden the music industry is forced to make a bit of a U-tune or, or a sharp shift into doing something different and I find that absolutely fascinating. But one thing is always clear and that is if you can build the audience on social media, there's always a way that you can build something bigger. You can monetize it. You can find ways of looking after that audience so that you have control. Despite what happens with the music industry, despite what happens outside, you are completely in control. But I do think because of that, it means you absolutely need to understand social media. So today we are going to talk about five social media goals for your music, five key areas that you can exploit, that you can build so that you can look after people, take them on your journey, but more importantly, bring them into your music. Let's get your music heard. If you're going to do that, this is how you're going to do it. Number one, and the most important thing I think, is the calendar. Everything should revolve around the calendar. I'm constantly hearing, I find social media hard, or the consistency of social media is difficult because I haven't got time, I'm not sure what to post on social media, my numbers aren't doing well enough, blah, blah, blah. I think that isn't social media. I think that is what's outside of the social media, but the social media is just a way, a vehicle, for telling people about the things that you're doing. The social media is not the adventure, the adventure is the adventure. All that social media is doing is telling people and bringing people into your story. And how we do that is the calendar. So I think you should plan out the next six months in a calendar. And let me explain what I mean by that. I'm constantly having conversations with musicians and artists. And I say, when's your next release? And they say, the next one's gonna be mid-September. And after that, probably late October. And in my head, I'm like, why have you given it a vague time? Imagine if you said that, guys, everyone, our new single's coming out sometime in the next couple of weeks. People wouldn't care. So we wouldn't do that to our audience. So why would we do that to ourselves? It's because we're terrified of pinning ourselves down. But when we do pin ourselves down, good things happen. So instead of saying mid-September, we say Friday the 15th of September. What about October? We're gonna release something in October. Yes, we are. It's gonna be Friday the 27th of October. Then we go through the diary and we put them in. And whether it's once a month, once every six weeks, once every eight weeks, we are putting this in. All of our releases for the next six months should be in with a specific date. Because what it means is you're not moving that date. So it means other people might have to work harder or faster. You might have to get tough on them, but I'm putting out on that date. So you better be ready because I am, I've got it in the diary. Then from there, we have our big pillars. That's when we put everything else in the diary. Photo shoots, get it in the diary. Video shoot, get it in the diary. Rehearsals, get it in the diary. Let's not just say, oh, we rehearse once a week, probably if we can get there. It's like, no, no. Let's put it in the diary. Let's make sure that we rehearse every Thursday. Then what happens is you can start to think about your social media based around the adventures that you're having, the tours that you're having, the gigs that you're having, the rehearsals you're having. You can say, oh, we're doing lots of good stuff. All we have to do is tell everyone what it is that we're doing. You take the calendar away and that's when you wake up and say, what shall I post on social media today? Now you're on the back foot and this is hard. This takes a lot of time, effort, creativity, and you have to try and be inspired every day. And that is so difficult. 
Number two, your next social media goal that I want you to think about is 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now, let me tell you why this is really important. It's because you might not realize this, but so much of the music industry turns to YouTube on a daily basis to go and find what they're looking for. That means live agents, they are looking for certain types of artists. They're looking for certain types of music. Where do they go? They go to YouTube because it's such a good search engine. Same thing when it comes to syncs. People are saying, how do I get my music on sync? Well, usually it helps if you're hooked up with a sync agent. Where do sync agents go when they're looking for something specific? They go to YouTube. And it's the same thing with festivals. I want, my, I want the next new good artist. What are they doing? They're turning to YouTube to go and find you. Whether it's searching in SEO or whether they've heard about you and they go, maybe I'll go and check out that new artist. Where do they go? They go to YouTube. And so many artists aren't taking YouTube seriously. So that 1,000 number does a couple of things. Number one, it says you're taking your YouTube seriously. It also tells YouTube you're taking YouTube seriously. But most importantly, it means that you have to learn YouTube. It means that you have to understand what to put on YouTube and how often you need to grow it. It means you're gonna to have to put content on YouTube in the form of long form content, which means you're gonna think, well, we could go and video that live gig. Yes, because that's what live agents wanna see. It means we could go and put some of that extra music on YouTube that's a bit more B-side. Yes, because that's what your audience wants to see. Maybe we will actually do some storytelling and some blogs. Yes, because that means you're playing the game. And the thousand figure isn't just so you can say we've got a thousand subscribers, it's because you're actually having to learn YouTube and understand that YouTube is more important for musicians, especially up and coming musicians, than you think. Because that's where people will go to look for you and if they've heard about you, that's where they'll go and look to see if they like you or not. So stop thinking of YouTube as a library just to store videos. And if you need them, that's where you go and see videos. No, 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 no. YouTube's where you get discovered. YouTube is where people will go and find out whether they really want to be a part of your journey or not. And if they go there and you haven't posted something for the last two or three or four months or six months, then they're just thinking, I don't even know if you're still going, but you're certainly not taking YouTube seriously. I'm not sure what you're like now or what the news is. So therefore I will pass. Take YouTube seriously and think about how you are going to get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And we are still in 2020, 0.5 granted. So think about how you can do this by 2021. You can do this in the next four or five months to get 1,000 subscribers if you're thinking about content and looking after your audience and figuring out how you can grow it. Number three, perfect your bio. And I don't mean your bio for PR that you're gonna send out. I mean your bio on Instagram, sort it out. The amount of bullshit bios that I see is unbelievable. And it's so much what stories. It's so much 24 year old artist from Minnesota that is into indie pop. And I'm like, what, what, what? I don't care. I don't care about that. I don't care if you're 20. I'm not looking at it going, thank God you're 24. That's okay then. That's not the way it works. I don't want to see your what stories. I want to see your why. I want to see why I should come on this journey. You're convincing me. You're not telling me small details. You're saying, this is why we're here. This is the, why should I care about following you on Instagram? Well, I'll tell you why, because we tear people's faces off when we go and play live. I'm like, yes, that's cool. I like face tearing riffs. So yes, I probably will follow you on a journey. If you say this is for people who never fitted in at school, or this is for people who actually want guitar solos back in their life, you just go, oh, that, that is me. And yes, 90% of people might say, no, I don't want guitar solos back in my life, but you're not focused on them. You're focused on the other 10%, and that's key. So if you look at an artist like Andrew WK, if you know who he is, his songs include things like Party Hard. Every song's about partying. You go to his Instagram, what does it say? It says, partiest guy on the planet. He understands his audience. And I'm sure loads of people go, I don't want that. But loads of people go, that's what I'm looking for. That's, that's who represents me. That's what your bio needs to do. So stop thinking about the what, the what and start thinking about the why. Number four, grow your traffic. Now, I know this sounds quite obvious, but we're always concentrating on numbers. We need more subs, we need more followers, we need more plays on Spotify. 
But when it comes to social media, the number that really, really counts is the traffic. How many people saw that video? How many people saw that picture? Because if we know that that's growing, the subs will start taking care of itself, as will the followers. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make something which is so good that it gets pushed out for the algorithm. So the way to do that is, especially on Instagram, is to go into your insights. So the way to find this, you go into your Instagram, at which point you click a picture, any picture, and it says view insights right underneath the screen. You click on view insights, and at which point it brings you up the more important information. So for example, it says discovery, 9,500 people discovered me. And out of 10,500 impressions, it also says how many people visited the profile, which means went into my Instagram. It tells me how many people of who saw it didn't follow me. And therefore it tells me how many follows I got because of it. So it says you got 21 new people who now follow you because of that picture. And this many people have seen it. And more importantly, this many people have sent you an email or gone to your website. This is the information we should be looking at, not just how many likes did I get? Because it's such a superficial number. What I'm more interested in is how many people actually went and saw this? I want more people to be aware of the brand and therefore I want more and more people to get through this. I wanna know how I can improve it. And when it says 46% of people who saw it weren't following my Instagram, that makes me think that's amazing. 46% of people either have never heard of me and now they know who I am or are more likely to follow my Instagram. Now that is a much more powerful stat than just how many likes did I get. And number five is create an accountability goal. Accountability is so crucial when it comes to social media. And the reason for that is because number one, he wants to build consistency. And as we are aware, consistency is so crucial in building an audience. And the amount of times I see inconsistent posts, and sometimes people are really busy for a week or maybe two weeks, and then they go missing for three days, five days, a week. And that consistency goes away. It's very much like tensing a muscle. Anyone can tense a muscle for a certain amount of time, but tensing it for a long time is diff difficult. Same thing with your socials. Posting five times this week, easy, but can you carry on doing that, turning it into a habit so that in six months time, you're still posting five times a week? Because that consistency allows you to grow so much more than anything else. Now, the way you do this is you add in accountability. This is where you are accountable to your audience, whether it's on YouTube and you say new videos every Wednesday. That way, you've laid it out. You've said, well, I know I need to do a video every Wednesday. If it's the same thing on Instagram, posting every single day, so therefore people say, oh, I know you're gonna post every single day. You're gonna tell people, I'll post every single day. That's why you're gonna follow. That's why you're going to subscribe. Now, it also does one really, really interesting thing, and that is it stops the biggest problem that almost every musician has, which is perfectionism. I can't put this out until it's ready, which is another reason why people say, I'll put this out mid-September instead of September the 15th, because I can only put out if it's perfect, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna sort of paint myself into a corner. It's the wrong thing to do. What we need to say is, I know I want this to be as good as it possibly can be, but at some point I also know that I need to put this out and start working on the next thing. So you've got this balance between quality and quantity, but you do need to be putting stuff out. So therefore, not just the accountability and the consistency, but you're also stopping that perfectionism, which is stopping you from growing. It's not ready yet, maybe tomorrow. Okay, we're still not ready yet, maybe tomorrow. Meanwhile, people are forgetting, people are losing interest, they're not caring. So at some point, that accountability says, it's not perfect, but it's got to go out because I have to push on. I have to get to that next level of, of content. I have to put out the next thing. That is a very difficult thing for musicians, and so accountability takes away perfectionism. So what we're talking about here is habit forming and discipline. And the way you do that is very simple, in your phone. It needs to be a reminder, it needs to be an alarm, it needs to be in your calendar. This is when you are going to post, so therefore, we're gonna go back and we're gonna say, well, this is when I'm gonna create it. I'm gonna make sure that that accountability is in 
telling me to post. Even better if you've got someone else around you who's also your accountability buddy. Have you done this? When's that coming out? Have I got that yet? Because that very much helps. But if you are on your own and it's just you, then it's you and your phone and this is your accountability buddy. This pops up and goes, oi, post, it's Wednesday. You know that you've got to post today. That accountability will solve a lot of your problems. These are some of the stuff we talk a lot about in DKMBA, which is the Music Business Academy. We're talking about how we can improve, how we can be faster, slicker, get more stuff out, improve with content, stop all of these problems like perfectionism. And the way you do that is you do have to have some discipline, which is what we work on quite a lot. So make sure that you start off first and foremost with your calendar. It is the crux of everything. It's the heartbeat of what it is that you do, especially on social media. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you can do me a favor, like, subscribe. More importantly, come and be a part of this community because we're doing this every single week. But also, if you are serious about this, then why not sign up to DK Music Business Academy? It has got hours and hours of content where we go so much further into depth than we can on YouTube. And on top of that, you get access to me in the community and via two live sessions. Honestly, I cannot stress how much value I think it is and how I wish I had something like this when I was starting off as a musician. So guys, thank you so much for watching. The link is down below. Get in and I will see you guys soon.